This is David Scherer with another video in Physics 572, uh, Introduction to Health Physics. Last time we talked about health effects, and now we're going to talk a little bit about uh, radiation biology, especially cell biology. Um, so we've talked a little bit about the overall organism and the different kinds of health effects. Now we're going to look at the fundamentals as to what causes those uh, injuries from radiation exposure. Okay, um, in order to do this, we're going to have to go over a little bit of cell biology. Um, and uh, this is a, a pretty superficial level, but I think it covers the information we need to to explain the ideas. Um, cellular level, uh, the way the cell works and what the cell does is largely determined by proteins. Uh, proteins can form very complex structures and uh, perform a lot of work uh, and become very large and, and very complex. So um, ultimately, uh, protein synthesis is uh, at the core of what makes the cell work. Um, the DNA, deoxyribonucleic acid, that's in the cell's nucleus uh, contains the template for all the different proteins that the cell will, will need to produce. Uh, and to, in order to manage its own internal affairs, to produce uh, hormones that might be released or uh, molecules, that uh, proteins that go through the membrane of the cell that uh, are used to signal uh, from, uh, from, you know, between different cells uh, as to what uh, the cell should do, um, what actions it should take. All, all of these are, are uh, largely accomplished uh, by proteins and all the proteins um, uh, are produced from essentially blueprints, templates, codes that are in the, the DNA. Uh, inside the, um, um, the cell's nucleus, the uh, DNA is organized into chromosomes and on the chromosomes are individual genes. Uh, a gene is a, a unit of DNA for a particular a protein that needs to be produced. Okay, uh, and then uh, DNA is uh, replicated. We'll talk a little bit about the cell cycle and how replication takes place. But replication of the DNA is the basis for uh, the heritability of traits. So cells pass along the, the template to their um, offspring in order to uh, so that, that that ability to uh, produce all those proteins uh, continues on. Okay, this is a, a diagram showing the structure of DNA. We don't need to go into all the chemicals, but it has several components. But the important point are these bases, uh, adenine, cytosine, thymine, guanine. Uh, they form a sort of a, a chain, a, a, a ladder, but the ladder is twisted, so it's a, a double helix. So it's a, a spiral with um, uh, uh, rungs, if you will, where certain um, base pairs match up identically. So um, when these cells and also these base pairs provide the template for how uh, proteins will be produced. Um, and it's a complicated phenomenon that involves the three base pairs code for an amino acid. All the amino acids are lined up in a row, et cetera. We're, we don't really need to go into that. The, the notion is that the, the genetic material, the DNA in the nucleus, guides all the cell's functions uh, through the proteins that it produces. And that's important because that's where the, the impo most important damage is going to occur in the cell. Um, the cell has enzymes, which are themselves proteins, that during the cell cycle, they uh, survey the, the, the DNA, check for any uh, uh, damage, any, any uh, errors, and correct them before the cell reproduce. Uh, cells that cannot, where a, a change is, is noted, but it can't be corrected, they have enzymes that cause apoptosis, <clears throat> which is cell death. So cells that cannot correct the genetic information end up stopping so that they don't reproduce these aberrant cells. However, if there's uncorrected damage that isn't recognized 
by the uh, surveillance and repair mechanisms, that can lead to mutation. Okay, so enzymes are the proteins that catalyze reactions in a cell. As I just mentioned a moment ago, they're all made of proteins, uh, uh, including the, the um, enzymes that, uh, the, the reactions that uh, correct and edit uh, or um, survey and edit uh, DNA. Uh, genes in the DNA contain the templates for enzymes that control cellular growth and division. Among those are oncogenes and suppressor genes. Oncogenes are genes that stimulate uh, a rep uh, replication that cause a cell to undergo replication. Suppressor genes are, are um, produce proteins that reduce the, the frequency of, of cell replication. So these two kind of mechanisms are at work at different cells. Some need to replicate, uh, like for example, I mentioned the the stem cells in the, the bone marrow, they need to constantly replicate, so the oncogenes are active. Uh, other cells are more stationary and, and not reproductive, and so suppressor genes, uh, and, and, and the proteins for suppressor genes, th those uh, enzymes will be more dominant. So a mutation is a change to the DNA template that is not able to be repaired and, and, and is not detected for apoptosis. So carcinogenesis is a, a mutation that produces growth dysregulation and, and leads to cancer. So carcinogenic transformations are, require a mutation, a particular kind of mutation, uh, that leads to uncontrolled growth, which is typical of cancer. So how does radiation cause damage in cells? Uh, well, we've already talked about radiation ionizes and excites molecules. Um, we talked about that with photons, we talked about all the mechanisms, we talked about that with uh, charged particles and electrons, uh, the, the way that the, the mechanisms they use to lead to, to ionization and excitation in molecules around. Now, there's a direct effect. Radiation come in and directly ionize biomolecules, DNA, enzymes, other material. Um, and, and that's a, a sum of the damage is caused in that way. But the vast majority, I've heard up to 90%, uh, some people say it's less than that, but a very large share, a majority of the, the uh, damage is caused by an indirect effect. So radiation will enter a cell, there's a lot of water in the cell, and it will excite or ionize the water. The water will uh, then uh, create free radicals or uh, reactive chemicals uh, like peroxide or other reactive chemicals. Uh, and uh, that chemical will then go on and cause uh, damage. Uh, it will inter interact with DNA or with enzymes or others, other material and, and cause the, the, the degradation. Uh, uh, radiation that is an indirect sort of way. The way Staben describes it, he says there's a, a uh, physical phase where there's ionization, there's a pre-chemical phase where these radicals are produced, and then there's a, a chemical reactions that take place uh, uh, f with these uh, free radicals and, and reactive species, etc. So he has a different terminology, but the idea is that there is a, a, a mechanism that takes several steps that, can, that causes most of the damage. It's not all just because the radiation comes through and ionizes the DNA. Um, now, uh, there is a, a bystander effect that's been observed. So DNA uh, damage has been observed in cells that have not been exposed to radiation, but have been adjacent to cells that were exposed to radiation. In fact, they have exposed cells to radiation, put them with other cells that were not exposed to radiation, and it turns out that the other cells then show DNA damage. It's presumably this is due to signaling that's taking place between the different cells, but it, 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 the, the phenomenon is, is pretty well established that uh, radiation damage occurs um, even so indirectly that it's not, by cells that have not themselves been uh, subjected to uh, ionization. Okay, so what kind of damage can occur in DNA? Well, as I said before, the DNA is this double helix, sort of like a ladder, a spiral ladder. Uh, 
Um, and there can be single strand breaks. In this case, there's a, a adenosine uh, base that has been removed because of either a chemical reaction with the free radical or direct ionization. Um, there, there can be multiple uh, single strand breaks. For example, in this case, there are two that are on opposite sides. And as long as they're far enough apart, the, 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 the pattern continues. So enzymes can come in and they can say, oh, here's a, a thiamine. A thiamine. We, we need to add in adenosine. And, and uh, it uses the code to, to correct the error and reestablish the correct uh, base pair. Uh, so um, these are relatively easy for the enzymes to repair if it's just a single strand break and the, the, it's relatively sparse. Double spread, strand breaks are much more difficult to repair. So it's entirely possible that this uh, one end of the broken strand may combine with a completely different chromosome uh, to um, uh, produce a, a, a chromosomal aberration. Um, in these kind of cases, in some cases, the cell is able to, the enzymes are able to detect that this break is taking place and, uh, and, and may signal the cell to go through apoptosis. But if uh, that doesn't happen, for example, if the enzymes that cause apoptosis have been damaged, then this may lead to mutation and, and uh, perhaps carcinogenesis. Okay, um, another concept I need to <coughs> uh, communicate is uh, the linear energy transfer. So when we talked about charged particles in matter, we talked about the stopping power, how much energy is deposited per unit length, dE dx. Um, stopping power is very uh, closely related to linear energy transfer. Uh, and, and in this case, they typically report it. The, the biologists use units of keV per micrometer. Um, the difference between a stopping power and LAT is stopping power includes that nuclear component when heavy, uh, highly charged particles like alpha particles come near the end, they can interact directly with nuclei instead of with electrons. Stopping power doesn't include that component. It's only the electronic component. Um, for heavy charged particles like alpha particles, neutrons, others, um, they have a very high LET. Two electric charges, very large mass, causes a lot of ionization along its path as it lumbers through and so there's a lot of ionization, a lot of tra energy transfer that takes place in, in short distance. And this can produce double strand breaks because so, much, so many ionizing events take place in such a short area that uh, uh, it's easier, uh, more probable that there will be a double strand break in that case. Photons and electrons are usually low LET radiation. They uh, occur, their, their interactions are less dense they're, they're less energy is transferred per unit length um, uh, in most cases. And so they have lower uh, LET. And in fact, photons are typically the reference uh, radiation. We'll talk about that in a little bit, by which all other uh, uh, radiations are measured. I will, however, point out that there are some circumstances where uh, low energy electrons, remember at the end of the, their path when electrons are traveling slowly, they deposit a lot more energy, just like the Bragg peak for the uh, heavier particles. Um, and OJ electrons are, are, have relatively low energy, and they deposit a lot of energy uh, per unit length traveled. And so they can have a, a higher LET than most photons and electrons. Um, uh, and so that's uh, an exception to this. Okay. Um, so... Uh, here's so how do the uh, um, cell biologists uh, display the data the, talking about um, how much damage has occurred? Well, one way they do this is our cell survival curves. So on this curve, we have the survival, the fraction of the cells that survive, and it's a logarithmic scale. This is 10%, this is 1%, etc. So it's a, a, a logarithmic scale, so this is really compressed. If we made it linear, it would really stretch out. Um, let's see. Um, so one of these curves shows the low LET radiation, the red curve. The 
blue curve shows the high LAT radiation. High LAT radiation, more ionization takes place per unit length, more cells are killed for the same amount of energy that's being deposited per unit mass. So we haven't talked about gray yet. That'll be in our next segment when we talk about professional issues. Um, but for, for our purposes, the amount of energy that's being deposited uh, it may be the same for low LAT and high LAT, but more ionization takes place in a short distance with high LAT, and so more cells are killed. Uh, fewer survive. Um, now, notice low LAT has, doesn't have much of a shoulder, but the high LAT has a shoulder on it. It sort of comes out and then, then becomes linear in uh later on at a higher dose. Um, and this characteristic with the shoulder has to do with whether, the, whether there's one hit or two hits that are taking place to cause the injury um, at higher dose. The, the, the total amount of ionization that's taking place is greater, so it's likely, more likely to be a double hit, and it straightens out or, or becomes this... Uh, 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 asymptotic uh, function, um, but the, the shoulder is when single hits are taking place and it, it less damage per um, unit dose early on. Okay, so fractionation. Suppose instead of uh, giving all this radiation as a single dose, like it's six gray here, we gave all that rate and, and a, a small fraction survived. Suppose we gave that same radiation with a bunch of, of, of smaller units. So we give it you know, six, uh, five gray, and then another five gray, and another five gray, etc. cetera. Um, well, what we find is that the shoulder reappears if we wait between the two uh, administrations. It's not like we take the five and then five more continues on the same path. The shoulder re reappears because there are repair repairs taking place, and the cells um, uh, are, are more able to take the uh, they repair their, the, the initial damage from the first dose, and then they're back at the beginning uh, and not cause and not having experiencing the, the greater damage from multiple lesions, multiple injuries, multiple ionization events. Um, so this idea of fractionation is uh, fractionated doses uh, causes uh, uh, less damage, and so that's one of the reasons for. Uh, radiation therapy being administered over uh, in, not all at one time, but uh, fraction divided doses over a, a period of time so that the healthy cells can repair and not be as uh, severely damaged. Okay, um, now relative biological effectiveness. So on these two curves, you can see low LAT and high LAT are different, picture, different uh, curves. Uh, high LAT uh, radiation uh, doesn't uh, have uh, a prominent shoulder. Low LAT radiation does have a prominent shoulder. So if we pick an endpoint, in this case we pick a survival rate of 10%, the amount of energy that's necessary to produce 10% uh, with low LAT radiation is more than what's necessary for the same effect with high LAT radiation, and that ratio is called the relative biological effectiveness. Um, we use x-rays as um, at the reference in most cases, uh, or um, photons anyway. Um, many studies use 100 keV uh, x-rays. Some studies use gamma rays from a particular nuclide. We'll deal with that. Um, whatever it is, the, the point is that highly ionizing particles um, uh, have caused more damage at less dose, or the same damage at less dose. That's the, what the RBE is. Okay, um, oxygen enhancement ratio. So if you have cells that you uh, put in an anoxic environment where they're <clears throat> not exposed to oxygen, uh, the oxygen is reduced, they will be less damaged than cells that have oxygen with them. And so the, the difference in dose for the same effect in no oxygen or high oxygen is called the oxygen enhancement ratio. 
And the more damage you, you use as your endpoint, the higher the OER is. Um, it is uh, also been observed that nitrous oxide produces similar effects. So that has to do with what the mechanism might be, uh, but it, it doesn't really matter for our purposes. It's, it's sufficient to understand that cells that are oxygenated are more sensitive to radiation than cells that are not. Okay, now we're going to talk about the cell cycle, about the mechanics of how damage occurs and, and what's going on as the cell goes through its life. So uh, mitosis is the process of cell division. Um, and and uh, I would just point out that each chromosome has two identical copies of the same genetic template. Uh, during the, the cell cycle, uh, when the cell divides under mitosis, one copy goes to each daughter cell. Um, and so that's where the M phase is. That's where mitosis is taking place. Half of the cytoplasm or all the materials around the nucleus go to each uh, daughter and half of the genetic material. One copy of the double copy chromosomes go to each daughter cell. That's mitosis. Then there's a gap period uh, uh, where, where growth is taking place, where the uh, cell is producing proteins so it can uh, replace and become the size that the previous generation was. It's half as big as the parent cell was. So it has to produce all the proteins necessary to, to become a mature cell. And in addition, it has to, um, uh, it may have some role in produce, doing its work. It's um, producing uh, uh, a hormone or producing, uh, you know, some, whatever its physiological function for that particular cell is, it can take place. The S phase is the synthesis phase. That's when the, the DNA in the one chromosome is duplicated to produce the second chromosome. And so the matched pairs of chromosomes take place. Um, then the, the are, are present in the cell, the matched pairs. And so we're back to the way the original cell was. The G2 is the growth phase. Um, it, during this phase is when the, the, uh, uh, the uh, enzymes can check for, for accuracy, can correct any errors that may have taken place in the G DNA uh, template um, and do all that work we talked about last time or in previous slides. Um, after the, the, during this phase, the, the chromosomes begin, when the chromosomes are synthesized and when they're doing their work in the G1 phase, they have to unwind. So that really dense chromosome has to, it, it's a, a helix, it's wound again into a, a coil, it's wound again, again. That all has to unwind so that the, the, the DNA can open up and it can uh, copy the template to produce proteins and to be duplicated um, in the S phase. Um, but in the G2 phase, and uh, then the chromosomes must coil again and, and become compact. And uh, this is when they're most susceptible to damage from radiation in the G2 and in the M phase. So when the, coil, the DNA is coiled heavily, uh, then you can have the kind of ionization that can cause breaks in, in chromosomes and, and cause significant damage. Um, so it, the cells are most sensitive during the G2 phase and the M phase. That, that's the point. Um, one of the things about this cell cycle is that, that uh, each different cell might be in each different phases at different times. So um, think of all the I don't know, liver cells uh, that be randomly distributed. Some will be in G1 while others are in S, while others are in G2. And so it'll be all, they take on their own time. One of the, because uh, radiation is more damaging during one part of the cell cycle, radiation exposure has the effect of synchronizing the cell cycle. All the cells that survive are in, in the uh, G1 or S phase where the chromosomes are unwound and more difficult to damage. However, if you wait a period of time, a day or something, then the cells have uh, uh, taken on a more random distribution. Some have moved on to the S phase 
promptly, some have moved on slowly, and so you have a more uniform distribution of the cell cycle. That's another reason why radiation therapy is done on a fractionated scale, so that uh, it can cause, uh, be more effective in killing tumor cells uh, that, that um, had, had been synchronized uh, by the, uh, the earlier radiation. Now, one more thing I want to talk about in, under the radiation biology uh, portion of this is the risk models that apply to cancer um, based on mostly on epidemiological data, the atomic bomb survivors and other cohorts, uh, we can project how much cancer is produced uh, from a, a given exposure, uh, what the risk is. There are two kinds of models that are used. One is the additive risk model. And so a person's overall cancer rate is going to be the background cancer rate plus some component due to its the radiation dose the person received. So the, the risk from radiation exposure is added on to the, the background cancer rate. Another approach are, are, is called multiplicative risk or relative risk model. In that case, a person's cancer risk is the background rate times some coefficient that's related to dose. So it, it um, it's more of a, uh, a it, it multiplies the background cancer rate rather than adds to it. Uh, my understanding is, and the statement says that the current state of, of uh, understanding is that, that relative risk models better represent the data. Uh, and, and, uh, and so that's what's preferred. There are uh, professional organizations that, that study this and present risk coefficients for cancer uh, um, based on exposure. Um, but as I told you last time, if 5% perceiver, although we haven't talked about Sievert yet, but let's use that as a number. That, that's a, a commonly used um, risk uh, coefficient. Uh, the point is that those are, this, as I told you before, is very difficult to observe uh, directly in, in the low dose regime for, uh, you know, a tenth of a sievert or, uh, you know, something like that. Um, well, that is difficult for, for well, it, 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 a tenth of a sievert is about the threshold where risks can be detected. Maybe two tenths of a sievert is where we can directly observe um, radiation, where p the difference in, in exposures, uh, cancer due to exposures. Um, that were, these are largely based on um, Hiroshima and Nagasaki, the RERF data. I do want to point out at low dose, so we have some data at higher doses. We really have no way to measure these directly at low doses, as I told you. Uh, I showed you an example with a, a population of 500,000. It was difficult to tell the difference. Um, and so uh, there are different models that might be used. Uh, common model that's been sort of assumed for lack of, because there is no data, is a linear model. It's possible that there could be a sublinear model. It's possible that it could be more dangerous than linear. Um, but linear is, is generally been accepted. We'll talk about this when we get into professional issues. Linear, the linear model has been accepted by most recommending organizations because we don't know. And so uh, the belief is the risks are small, but this is the best way to characterize a risk in the, the absence of any other information. Um, now, when we use data from uh, atomic bomb survivors where all the radiation was delivered uh, acutely, we do have to apply a dose, dose rate correction factor because of that issue I showed you with the shoulders, uh, that it's, the, the, the damage is less when, it's, when, when radiation is either fractionated or at a lower dose rate. So I think that's everything we have for today. I thank you for your attention. Um, this should be the last lecture before we uh, have a quiz, one of our tests. Um, I 
have uh, sent an email uh, saying that I'm uh, anxious to uh, have Zoom meetings to be able to go over this material. I'll try to organize uh, uh, a review of the material that's most important to understand. Uh, but I think that, that uh, direct interaction might be really helpful to help both of us know where we are. So thanks for your attention.